Hi everybody, thank you for tuning in and joining us for um, the February vlog at the GSRC. Uh, happy Black Heritage Month. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Ari Owens. I use she, her, her pronouns, and I serve as the assistant director here at the GSRC. I'm super excited because as you can see, we have a guest today with us, Betty. Um, so go ahead and introduce yourself. Hey everyone, my name is Betty Madison Ferris. I use she, her, hers pronouns as well. Um, I work in the admissions office at NIU as a freshman admissions counselor. Um, I also used to work at the GSRC way back in the day, so really only a couple years ago, so not back in the day. Um, <laughs> but I used to uh, also work in the Center for Black Studies. I currently serve as the secretary um, on the Presidential Commission for Sexual Orientation and Gender Identity. Um, and then I also serve um, as the co-advisor for PRISM. Awesome, thank you so much. So you can see why we wanted Betty to be a guest because she's amazing. Uh, we definitely miss her here at the GSRC and we're happy to still have her on campus. Um, so yes, as I said, it's Black Heritage Month, obviously. Um, so definitely make sure you check out the calendar of events that the Center for Black Studies is hosting. Um, they have a lot of really amazing programs going on. Um, and I know if you go to the NAU calendar, you can sign up for all of them and just view what's happening. Um, we also have a collaboration with them this month on the 19th uh, for their Soulful Friday. So I will definitely um, share more about that towards the end of the video. Uh, but now I want to get into a conversation with Betty uh, related to Black Heritage Month, of course. Um, and I want to start off with a quote from Alice Walker. Um, if you don't know Alice Walker, probably what she's most known for is writing the color purple. Um, she also coined the, coined the term, excuse me, womanism. Um, so shout out to Womanist Wednesday. That's also coming up in a couple weeks. Uh, and so I wanted to begin our conversation uh, with a quote from her that I think is really powerful. And then Betty, I'll just get your reaction and we'll kind of go from there. Um, so the quote says, all history is current. All injustice continues on some level somewhere in the world. Um, so as I said, I thought that was super powerful, but I'm curious, what are your reactions to that? I think I agree with the quote. I've never heard um, someone talk about history in the present in that way. I think that because, for one, history repeats itself, so it has to be something that's constantly occurring in the world. And I think if you pay attention to other countries and what's happening in other countries, you also can you know, kind of not really compare, but you see how we can sometimes be in our little bubble of things that we're experiencing. Um, and then, you know, it not it may not necessarily be different from someone in another country. So, for example, if we are dealing with sex trafficking here, there's people in other countries that are also dealing with that. But there's different levels and layers to their experience that may make that different than ours. Yeah, I agree. Um, something else that stands out to me, I'm just pulling up the quote again. Um, continues in some somewhere in the world. Um, I know at NIU we're really big on um, like celebrating Dr. Martin Luther King Day, like we have the day off, which is great, and there's like sometimes programming around that. Um, and I think about the ways that um, like Martin Luther King and his legacy has been very um, like whitewashed and a little bit like sanitized, like, oh, like he was nonviolent and wanted this and that. Mm -hmm. And so like when we think about like Black Lives Matter today and also like um, the hate crime that occurred at the CBS like last fall, it's very easy to like um, like separate those things and think like, wow, like I can't believe this happened. Like, mm -hmm. but it's also like what well, we can believe it happened because it happened before and mm -hmm. like Dr. King, like, you know, he spoke about these things. And so, you mm -hmm. know, and the reason I brought up Black Lives Matter before is because um, obviously there's a lot of parallels, but not to everybody. And so I think it's important, like, um, to acknowledge that. And like in Alice Walker's quote, when she talks about um, like it's continuing, like, like you mentioned, like history repeating itself. And I feel like in a lot of ways, like the history didn't end. Like, yes. again, it's, it's still yes. happening. Um, so like, yeah, elements of it are definitely like being repeated and looking differently. And so I think like it is important for, you know, us as an NIU community to like make people aware of like actual, like accurate history mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, interrupt when we see like legacies being uh, whitewashed or watered down because then it's so much harder. It's like you have to constantly learn and relearn and unlearn. Mm -hmm. uh, and so like, I just think that's important. Uh, when it comes to like history and realizing like the current parallels and also like the parts of it that never really 
truly ended. Absolutely. I think that's a good point because while you were saying it, I'm like, with Black history, I think people have gotten so good at sweeping under the rug all the really, really terrible stuff. Um, like, for example, when you think about the the issue that happened at the the White House, I can think of the building, the White House, yes. where there's people who went in and protest and all that but then you think about with kkk history right those people took the hoods off Mm -hmm. and now they are somewhere working in the world those people are somebody's grandparents or somebody's parents they didn't go anywhere and then like you know with us i feel like we have to they reinvent ways to oppress people and oppress black people and they figure out new ways to put us in prisons and put us in all types of spaces that are still oppressing us and so we have to pay attention to what history already said but also how it transitioned and like manifested into everything that it is now too absolutely um thank you so much for sharing that i really appreciate this conversation and i wish we had more time Mm -hmm. uh, but luckily we have all month and we continue uh we encourage y'all to continue having similar conversations and learning more um, about history, about Alice Walker. She's Mm -hmm. amazing. Definitely do a Google if you weren't already familiar. Mm -hmm. Um, So before I let you all go, um, I want to let you know that tonight, WGAA, uh, the Women and Gender Advocacy Alliance, they're having their meeting on Teams at 5, and they'll be discussing Black history on February 13th, which is a Saturday. We have a Speakers Bureau panel, and I can drop the links for everything um, I'm showing in the comments so you can sign up and learn more. Uh, As I shared before, we have that collaboration with the CBS SOFA Friday on the 19th. Um, We're going to be talking about uh, Black queer representation in the media, so that will be really um, exciting and informative. Um, And then also, as always, make sure you're following us on Instagram so you can catch our Womanist Wednesday. Uh, On the 17th, uh, Demetria is going to be talking about misogynoir. So if you're like, I've never heard that word, great. Tune into Instagram. Uh, You can learn more about what that is because it's, you know, very important to consider the ways that um, blackness and gender and sexism all intersect because they do. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then finally, we have our Pride magazines and Tea with Trevin that'll be released this month as well on Instagram. Um, So definitely make sure you're following us there. Uh, Betty, thank you once again for joining us. I appreciate you as always. I appreciate this conversation. Uh, And thank you all for watching and choosing to be at home with us at the GSRC. See you later.